So if you've been following my various other videos recently, you'll have seen how I've been sprucing up my flintlock miniatures and buying a few more flintlock minis to use for the silver bayonet, for which they are remarkably well suited. And whilst before, you'll see from the other videos, I've done my uh, British Orcs, I'm now on to the French Elves. So that guy over there is an infantryman. I try to keep the painting simple, relying heavily on the job I did back in the 90s. As I often point out, for some reason the black just seems to flake off a little bit, even the modern paints, but I suspect it's to do with what's underneath. And if you do a good base coat, then, um, you know, undercoat, then the paint on top shouldn't flake off, which is why these days I use Halford's primer, because it never comes off. And it's kind of like that uh, Renaissance Italian painting style, you know, when they would kind of paint onto wet plaster, and the paint would kind of fuse. And so nothing ever seems to flake off Halford's primer, but these, you know, this is 30 years ago. One thing I realised was that actually trying to paint the eyes and black line back in the day in the 90s is what made these look awful to me. Uh, but they're beautiful models. And when I just painted, you know, normally, you know, with a, an undercoat, a wash and uh, a little bit of layered highlighting and didn't bother with the eyes, it looked, they looked great. And that was particularly true of the leader over here. Holding his pink handkerchief because every elf warlord needs a pink handkerchief because he's an elf and because in this case these represent the French and they have, you know, a heightened sense of culture and raffinesse. We could always just say that the pink handkerchief, for example, is a holy symbol. As it says here, uh, it doesn't particularly matter which religion. It's just the faith behind the symbol that's important. And uh, carrying it confers special protections against some creatures. So maybe just a, a belief in haute couture and high culture could be something which defends him from the barbarity of, well, certainly, the British orcs. Only thing is, in the rules, he's supposed to have a fair bit of weaponry. And so we're just going to assume that he's sequestered on himself somewhere, a couple of pistols. I mean, these two over here are from the original flintlock box, which I remember buying uh, from effectively a market stall in my hometown as a teenager. So it was a very long time ago and it was great fun to repaint them. I mean, they are low on detail, but high on character, which is, I guess, where you want to be. This fellow, is a more recent acquisition. Adding a bit of bulk and heft to the elves. It will of course be wholly obvious to you that the ogre is painted in the colors of Reuss, one of the uh, Germanic allies of Napoleon because in Flintlock, the Germanic states are basically ogres. And there's a bit of education for us all. What is the Reichsgrafschaft Reuss? A couple of historical states. I mean, who's ever heard of that? Do I embarrass myself? Anyone else ever heard? Drop me a comment. In present-day Thüringen. Very nice. kneeling and yelling as they encounter the British. And just to give you a sense of scale, well, that's a kind of Games Workshop heroic 32 millimeter scale great sword. And this is a, a 28 millimeter War Games Foundry, kind of more historical type miniature, though I think he might be some kind of voodoo spirit, but he's basically the size of a man, a voodoo zombie for Dracula's America, for the Congregation faction. 
most of those guys are going to be just plain infantrymen, which as you can see here, have basic stats. I must say the flintlock miniatures do nicely show that. The cartridge box is just not a piece of random equipment. Um, they've all got their hands vigorously grabbing, uh, I don't know how it works with loading a musket, but whatever you need from the cartridge box to get that musket reloaded. And then I think I'll just use the ogre as one of these damn fear, which I've spoken about before a bit. They're just some kind of superhuman vampire type creature, but the thing is, you know, they're a bit better at melee, got solid defense, quite courageous, and um, can have a few interesting slots. I could probably build in a blunderbuss in, in there as well, just as an equivalent to a kind of superhuman type character. I think you have to pay eight points extra for taking characters outside of your nationality because each has its own kind of specialist dudes uh, and so they don't want you to be able to take all the specialist dudes for all of the factions without penalty but you know maybe if you agree not to take something else that's a speciality for your nation no one will object i mean i certainly won't object thank you very much for watching do subscribe and then at some point maybe over the christmas period you'll get to see the others in my french elf uh, force for the silver bayonet I've got a Vivin Vivandier to come one of those ladies who kind of dolped out alcohol and goodies to the troops and march on Russia uh, I've got a couple of swordsmen, cavalrymen types and a kind of evil cunning character who must be Duco from the Sharp novels who's a French intelligence officer and will work out what to do best with him in the rules. Please do like, and uh, if you have any suggestions or comments about how you're using Flintlock stuff, by all means, drop me a line uh, by leaving a comment. Cheers.